Gran Canaria finally. This trip got a little bit delayed because I was a cleaner. Massive sandstorm from Morocco blew over early in the week, but so I delayed my flight. So it's now Saturday, so nearly six days until the race now. So Trans Gran Canaria, 128k, 7,500 meters of climbing across Gran Canaria Island. So I've really been looking forward to this race for years. It's been on my kind of to-do list. Um, I say that about every race, but I, that's, that's always the case, I guess. But it's really epic to be here. I don't think I've quite ran in a landscape as vast as this. Um, it's pretty epic. All these massive canyons and mountains across the middle of the island. Really dry and quite dusty, so it's quite fun running on it after being in there. Most runs, just lots of mud, wet, rain, snow, ice that we've been having in Wales. So training had definitely been different in lead up to Gran Canaria. I've been in Wales for my first time over a winter for the first time in a few years. That was definitely a little bit of a shock and something to get used to. Um, training in those colder climates, colder conditions out on the Brecon Beacons. But I was really confident that I was able to simulate the best training I could between the trails there and then the training that I was doing from the front door in my home in Cardiff. So from Cardiff we got got some small hills, some small mountains, but some good bike paths and some good local trails to run. So the combination of getting the longer days in the mountains, but also made sure that I was spending a lot of time over the winter focusing on the key ingredients that are definitely important if you're looking to be towards the sharp end of these ultra races. So making sure I was getting some good speed sessions in there, some, some strong hill sessions as well, making sure that I just wasn't focused on volume, but focused on the quality. So I'm just wrecking some of the course today. Um, so I've just started just below Rock and Nublo. It'd be good just to see this high part of the course a little bit more and know what to expect on race day. These trails are so much fun. So I'm on my way back up to Rock and Nublo now. After this point in the race, I think it's around 85k. You then have pretty much a marathon to the finish. For the most part downhill, so nearly kind of 2,000 meters dropping downhill uh, for 42k. There's definitely still some climbing in there, but primarily downhill. So this is the point in the race I wanted to check out to know when I'm getting to it, what it's going to be like and try and envision how I'm going to feel and what I want to do in that last 42k. Obviously you want to be able to hit it hard with good legs and descend and just move well with good efficiency in this last part of the course. We're on the course with Robert Hodge now. How are you doing Robert? Getting pretty hot. <laughs> Massive kind of canyon lands. And just epic views up into the mountains before we head down back towards the city. Woo! So we're inside the canyons now in the last 10k of the course and it's just well, it's like a, a dried up riverbed so it's pretty tough on the floor if you're tired. At this point in the race it'll take a lot of energy to keep putting there. It's super hot right now. The course in Gran Canaria is really unique um, in that you're running from one side of the island to, to the other, um, something that I'd never had the opportunity to race like that before. And with it being a volcanic island, it meant that a lot of the climbing um, in the first half of the course, as you get to that, that kind of high ground there, Rocky Nublo in the middle of the course, um, so that was something that I was definitely keeping in mind, knowing that in the back end of the course, I was going to have a long descent um, before a really tough river section. Having that opportunity to run with Robert in the river section was really helpful. It was good fun to run with another strong runner, allowing us to really scope out that last section of the course, which a lot of people um, always find really difficult and really tricky as it's coming into the heat of the day when you get there and it gets really hot really fast in those canyons. And it's definitely an important part of the course to really try and hit and have a good idea of when you're feeling that tired and that fatigued towards the end of an ultra and you've been running all the way through the night to then be hit with that kind of heat towards the end of the race it's important to know that section of the race and have the confidence that yeah the, the finish really isn't too far away so that on on race day you can really make the most of that section really good fun on my last section didn't seem too bad today but i'm sure in the race once you've got 120 rks in my legs well, 100k's in the legs before you get to that section. It's gonna feel a little bit tough, pretty rocky. 
and uh, a bit challenging if you're tired and fatigued. So hopefully you're good at that point in the race for it and get it done. I hope we run on the race same as today. Yeah, easy. easy. Hopefully, yeah, no problems. <laughs> So I'm on the west side of the island now and uh, heading off for a run up to Sal El Sal, uh, a little village in the mountains here. So I'm driving up to the mountains now from the coast. It's just spectacular on this side of the island, really, really stunning. A lot more green and dense, uh, a bit more vegetation than on the south. So I'm really psyched to keep driving up and see, see where we end up, just so I can check out some sections of the course over there. I'm on this really pretty cool trail just hugged against the land the landscape and these amazing mountains so you can see the trail going up here and then it kind of hugs under this cliff and around up into the valley so pretty cool stuff Taking it easy, trying not to overdo things. It's Monday now and the race is on Friday night, so yeah, I should try and not get too much vertical on my legs really this week. But just today I'm on the course. Tomorrow maybe a bit more of a rolling section of the course. And then uh, probably chill it down then Wednesday, Thursday, race on Friday. Wanted to hit the summit, but I think I'm going to turn back because um, I've already climbed about 750 meters and there's a bit of downhill to get here as well, so probably be over 800 meters. Don't want to do too much before race day now. When it came down to seeing the course in the week leading up to the race, that was a really valuable, really important aspect of, of any race when you're looking to really perform your best within an ultra. It always makes those bigger climbs seem a lot smaller when you know them, just as it would within a training run back home. So that was really the goal with the wrecking. I was trying to get to the high points just to check out Rocky Nublo, have a little bit of an idea of what the trails would look like, the conditions and the foot, and have a bit more of a plan going into the race of what I was hoping to do to achieve from a time perspective, but also from a mental perspective at those areas of the race. So how did I want to feel when I got to that part of the course and trying to visualize that? Or what happens if I feel this bad when I get there and I know I've got this massive climb ahead of me, at least that climb will be a little bit more familiar. Another day, another bit of the course, nothing too far. It's getting a bit more course in the legs, just check it out, keep myself busy. So I think this section is only about 28 kilometers in, so it's still about 100k to go from this point in the race. And we're still climbing up for primarily 60k of that, so it's it's a big, big old race. So really psyched to have seen this section now, and uh, going to start heading back. I think I have to take the car back today as well, so it's going to be last part of the course probably I see. That was just a short 10k run, and a bit of the course there, just to get a feel for the different areas is why I wanted to do more than anything just you know with only a few days obviously wasn't going to be able to see exactly the whole course um, well definitely wasn't going to see the whole course so I'm knackering myself out for the race <clears throat> but I've kind of seen a little bit from this you know each quarter of the race I guess so I got a little feel for what the trails are going to be like and then what I can expect to kind of find along the way so it just gives me a little bit of a vision of what's happening but I'm glad I got to see some good key parts which are Rocky Nubo and then uh, the last section, the last 20k of the course, which is the really important section to know. Um, so that race day I can just stay focused, know what's ahead when you're tired. I think that's always the most important part because it starts to get really hard when you're not sure about that. So head back to the car now, drop it off, and then that's it for most of the course recce. So a couple of days just easy running now around Maspalomas and then uh, 
uh, getting ready and rested for the race. So I've just been for a nice easy run this morning, 11 kilometers just along the coast. I didn't do anything yesterday, I had a full rest day, um, a bit of walking around. Um, just give the body the extra time, the extra recovery to really rest up for the race. But then I always like to run, well usually anyway, the day before the race. But then when it's a night race like this, I actually probably get out tomorrow morning for a, just a real easy little shuffle, just to keep the legs moving, keep the body flowing as it normally would. I think routine's really important. And when you have a, a race, it's really easy just to kind of rest a lot more than you're used to, which is obviously kind of important. You need to be tapering down, but you really need to be trying to focus on keeping those routines going mentally and physically, I feel, to keep the digestive system, your metabolism, everything kind of firing just that little bit. And uh, for night races, anyway, I find it really benefits me so I can get up, go for a little run as I always would, have some breakfast, and then just chill out, and then try and have a nap in the afternoon, go for a bit of a walk, try and keep some sort of routine to the day. Otherwise, I find it really restless and really frustrating just waiting around the whole day for the race at 11 p.m. I'm not the kind of person who can switch his whole sleep schedule around to do that. I know that some people can, but not me. Anyway, it's nice to be by the ocean, listening to the waves, reflecting on all the training that I've done and uh, what I want to achieve in the race. So it's go time. I've got all my gear on, ready to head off. Uh, to meet Mike. Mike's gonna drive me over to the start on the North Island. Really excited for this race, been looking forward to it so long. Really hope all those long cold days in the winter up in Bracken Beacons pays off and uh, comes out with a good result. So wish me luck guys. My last race had been all the way back to UTMB, so it felt like a lifetime ago. Harry Jones, great job, Harry. It's always strange after having a few months off between ultras and then kind of getting into that groove before the next one. You never quite know. Um, how you're going to feel for that full distance again um, especially for myself I've always been quite lucky that I've always kind of bounced from one, one race to the next but the plan was always after UTMB just to give myself a good few months off um, and a chance to really freshen up so getting on that start line felt like a big relief I was so excited just to get going after it being such a build up for the race. Having been there for a few days or a week beforehand checking out the course, I was really excited just to get going off that start line and see what it was all about. We'll see you tomorrow night, everybody. So as soon as we started along the beachfront, um, the first kind of few kilometers there you're running along the beach was, which was a bit tougher than you'd imagine when everyone's going so fast off the start line. Soon though, I found myself on my own after having lost touch with them, going through one of the villages early on. But I was feeling really good, really relaxed, really confident. You know, I was up there maybe top five, at least top eight, maybe at that point in the race. I'm feeling really good and settled into pace, which is really uh, what I'm always after within that kind of early stages within an ultra. You kind of want to go off, um, giving yourself a good chance to be in good standings, but you're really looking forward to that moment where you can just kind of relax into the race settle into your pace and uh, yeah and, and then see what comes later on as uh, people start to get tired and people start to move up through the field eventually dylan bowman came up alongside me and at that point in the race i knew that i had to kind of turn things around if i really wanted to stay up with the leaders as much as I did and to really start thinking about catching some of those guys um, that I moved up through the field early on. This was the time to do it. We'd started to overtake a few people. We were definitely in the top five by this point and um, from all, all we'd heard on the course was that Jared Hayes in the head was was uh, definitely not getting any further ahead of us. So I think at that point we were both thinking, okay, well maybe top three is uh, is possible and is looking good at this stage in the race. As we started to make the ascent up to Rock and Ublo, this was a part of the course that I was very grateful to have been able to recce. I knew that um, once I got to Rock and Ublo, we had a lot of descending ahead of us. So there was certainly some climbs ahead, but the majority of the race then had a net downhill, which was something that I was really looking forward to that stage, knowing that it was still a marathon to go, but with a net downhill, that's something that can be covered pretty quickly and on tired legs will certainly help the kilometers fly by when you start getting fatigued at that stage in the race. Unfortunately though, at this point, I started to lose touch with Dylan. He started to put the put the gas on a little bit on that climb and I just didn't quite have the legs at that point. Getting to the high point there, Rocky Nublo was a big plus though. Seeing the views was really epic. The descents 
were really quite gnarly in some places. I did take a bit of a fall at one point, which definitely woke me up a little bit. I think I was being a little bit lethargic maybe at that stage in the race. I kept telling myself just to hold on, hold on for that river section, get to that river section, be one of the last aid stations. You have an opportunity to really cool yourself down, throw some water over the head, and then just really push on to the finish knowing that, that from that last day station through to the finish, that river section is something that was familiar enough after having ran it once with Robert the week before, um, but also knowing that really there was no more major climbs ahead. It was all downhill or flat from that part in. That's Harry in fourth place. How are you feeling, man? Hanging in there. You're looking good. Yeah, you've had a nice little shower. Here you go. All right, see you on the other side. Take a right, man. Stay strong. Getting out of that last day station, I felt confident I was in fourth place. We were starting to catch up and all the other races that had gone off later on in the day from those higher sections of the course. And it got a little bit overwhelming in some parts where it was a bit busy on the trail and you kind of start getting a bit paranoid that someone's going to pass you because you're really not moving. Well, I wasn't moving particularly fast towards those end stages of the race there. It felt like hitting five, five minute kilometers was really tough um, when I was hoping to run a little bit faster in that stage of the race. So I kept having to kind of check behind me, but made a promise to myself not to check too much and just to focus on what was ahead. Maybe there's still a chance I could chase down third place, but you never know. You just have to stay focused, stay committed on yourself and to enjoy that experience. Coming down into the promenade, into that final stage of the finish, felt like an incredible feeling. So sort I've of placed fourth on a strong field there, an ultra trail world tour race. Having been some guys I really look up to and respect in the sport always means something. And to have, yeah, not been too far behind the leaders. Oh, Harry, awesome. Position. Harry, that's superb. One of your best races ever, I'm sure. You must be delighted with that top five. Yeah, definitely Woo! delighted with that. Um, really tough race from the go, and uh, I really put it out there. And uh, big thanks to Dylan Bowman, uh, who dragged me out of a bit of a slumber and managed to pull me along up through the field. So we had a great time out there. But yeah, the course is beautiful, brutal. But yeah, I loved every second. Thank you. I'd certainly gone into the race with the idea of placing well and getting a good result, knowing that I was in good shape and I was focused and determined and excited for this race more than anything after it having been maybe six months since my last ultra at UTMB. Definitely felt excited knowing that conditions and training had, hadn't been ideal, but knowing that there was that extra level to go within training into the race ahead within the season. TGC was my last race and it's been really strange not having the opportunity to be able to race again since then. It ended up being a good few months before I could get to the mountains again, before I could really explore uh, my local mountains in the Brecon Beacons. And that was something that I learned to really appreciate again within that time frame, was just how much those mean to me. Whether I can race or not, just being out in those landscapes means everything. Mm -hmm.